uh, presentation. Very good. Thank you so much uh, for adding that. Okay, I think it's really important because a lot of things are clickable only on the PowerPoint presentation and not in the uh, WizIQ whiteboard. Okay, so that's great. Okay, thank you. People are going to be coming in, so feel free to help them if they don't know what's going on. All right, next question is, what is the link to your profile? <laughs> this is going to take a few seconds. Okay, so hello, Percy from Peru. And I'm going to take a wait. Listen, if your uh, connection is not good, it tells you to get rid of uh, my webcam, uh, do what it says. Okay, it'll make sure that your connection is good. I got rid of mine because I got a message saying that I should. All right, so let's see, Andrea. Okay, so let's see a little bit about Andrea here. Now, this is really important. Thank you. I suggest we all connect. So add Andrea as a contact. Okay, and um, so that we can, even though we are connected in the course, but uh, we can be even more connected this way. Okay, so thank you. Excellent, excellent, Andrea. All right, so uh, let's see, was that the only one? Let me just make sure that I'm getting the chat here. If you want to make the chat bigger, feel free to, um, by uh, clicking on, there is an arrow. I hope you can see the arrow. Just click on it, it'll go to the middle, and then you can pull it the way you pull images from the right to the left. I'm going to show you this. You'll see it in the YouTube video. So it's really, oh, thank you, Lisa. It's a lot easier. And Neve, Nevis there, we've got Nevis as well. Okay, and I see that we're not connected. Isn't that interesting? So uh, what happened? So you connect with me because I see that we're not connected. All right, so uh, try to uh, connect with everyone. Okay, and let's see. Uh, you're going on to the next question. And Lisa, Lisa, I believe we're connected. But no, that's the wrong URL, Lisa. There, uh, Lisa, there's something wrong with it. Let me see if I can fix it. You should add your name. Oh, I think I got it. There's the right one. I got it. I took off some stuff that was added. Sorry about that. Uh, Lisa, there it is. There was a little bit of um, stuff added to it. Check your, um, whenever you add a link. We talked about this last time. Whenever you add a link, check it to make sure there's not extra stuff added to it. Um, okay, and Jarek. Okay, so we've got courses here, but I don't see. <laughs> there's Tom. All right, so connect with Tom. And um, I don't know if uh, Apelash, Dr. Nayak, and I'm not sure if that's your profile. No, it's not. That seems to be... Nope, that's not your profile. So um, you'll have to find your profile. It's really important so that you can share it, especially if you want to make money on WizIQ. Uh, it's good to be able to share your link. Okay, so um, Dr. Nayak, you'll have to check that because there's something missing there. Okay, it should be your name and a number, but it could be just a name. Okay, so the third one is what is the link to Moodle MOOC 4? And I think you've added that on WizIQ. Okay, so let's see if you've got that. Okay, that's question number three. Hassan, that looks right, very good. Check your own uh, links to make sure that there's nothing fishy going on there. And okay, Hassan, let's see any others. You can find your link below your actual pro. Thank you very much, Nevis. You've been doing your homework from uh, the other previous classes. Now, it, listen, it's very, very empowering to be able to do things because it's not only information that you get online, you get skills and being able to use those skills your uh, online skills, learning and teaching skills is very, very empowering and really does change a person. Uh, you get a lot of confidence. So uh, feel free to do that. Plus your brain, you get extra cells for doing all this work. Uh, lots of your brain expands. Okay, question number four. 
as you can see, you're going to add to the, uh, thank you, Diana, you're doing a great job there. Now, number four, five, and six, okay? Number six, you're going to do at the end, okay? And we'll screen share and see what's happening over there. Number four, okay? This is a question you might want to think about it. What do you find positive about the course so far? Explain. Okay, we're talking about positive thinking. There's no point in being negative about anything. It's not going to get us too far. It's just going to give us a lot of headaches and ill health. Um, and what are you finding challenging? Notice, not negative, but challenging. And challenging means that we're not blaming anyone. We're not blaming ourselves. We're not blaming somebody else. We're simply stating a fact. Okay, not negative, not positive, just a fact. Okay, so um, Carl says, because, Carl, it has to be in the course feed. Notice the instructions here, please. Uh, share the results in the chat box for questions one to three and in the course feed of Moodle MOOC 4 for questions four and six. And if you don't know where the Moodle feed is, it's question number three. Okay, and that's the link to Moodle MOOC 4 on WizIQ. And there it is. Somebody's added it. Andrea's added it. Excellent. Thank you. And Therese, I tried to use Think. Oh, excellent. To do a task last night. And I'm not able to get into, into where? Let me see there. Because that's a great idea. Um, let me uh, pop. I can't see. If you can't see the chat, pop it. That's what I do. And then you can increase it and see what's going on there. Um, okay, let's see what... Um, that was a very important question that you just asked, um, Teresa. No, you have to add in the course feed, not in the chat. I'm getting information in the chat. No, in the course feed so we can continue the discussions. Uh, the problem with chats is they go very fast and you can't really uh, continue the discussions. That's why it's the chat. Uh, and we want to continue discussing this. So the discussion form is called a course feed. So, um, Teresa, if you have any more problems, um, let me know. Please um, add it to uh, the support or uh, email me about think. I'm not able to get it into the task window. Um, explain where. Okay, if you can be more specific and uh, we'll see how that goes. They just fixed the assignment area, but uh, you should be able to get it into uh, the Moodle reflection area. Okay, in the reflection area, and you have an editor there, and, and that should be a piece of cake. All right? No, not here, Ella. Ooh. We want to continue the discussion, so please add everything to the course feed on WizIQ, okay, not here, the course, <laughs> there's Hassan, Hassan is angry, in the course feed, all right, so uh, Hassan, that's part of the attention blink, remember attention blink, it's where we are so focused on one thing, we don't see something else, okay, and this is very natural, there's nothing wrong about it, so Try to focus on the questions, question number, I mean the instructions, so you don't get any attention blink. This could be uh, worked on, by the way. Okay, so questions four to six in the course feed. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you have gone to the course feed? Just tell me, are you in the, you can't answer here and there at the same time, in the course feed? Are you? Yes, no. Carl's in the chorus feed. Can you be in two places at the same time? Thumbs up if you can be in two places at the same time. It's not logical, but can you? Yes, you can online. You can be in two places. You can be listening to me. You can be right in the chat. Are you sure? Okay, so isn't it amazing? You know, we really have to appreciate technology for giving us so many tools that we can break reality or what we thought was reality. Okay, so focus, no attentional blinks. Questions four to six in the course feed. Question six for later on, okay, after the session's over. So is everybody getting it? If not, I'll come back to it. All right, so um, course feed of Moodle 
Yes, Carl, exactly. Posted, Lisa, you're a fast worker. All right, so these are skills, okay? These are skills that our students have and we have to practice. But by the way, they also need to practice it, okay? They need to practice reading instructions and avoid attentional blinks, okay? Just like anybody else, all right? So let's um, end that part of the session and let's go on to, all right, to what we've got planned for today. So uh, there is the Moodle MOOC, Moodle MOOC 4. All right, so uh, we're going to go through a little bit of, uh, uh, I guess, housekeeping to help you guys uh, manage the Moodle. All right, so I don't know if you've discovered different things about the top tab. Okay, these are, actually it's a menu. Okay, uh, there are lots of menus here and lots of information, but let's try to focus on the site. Okay, the front page of the site. If you could add the link in the chat box, everybody, that would be great. Okay, the link to, you don't have to remember anything, you just go there, but maybe you have it in your favorites, maybe you have it in your thumb and you can just, in your mouse, and you can just uh, paste it. Okay, so um, where do I find this? Thank you, Carl. That was fast. All right, so follow Carl's example. Okay, there it is. That's the link to Moodle for Teachers. And when you get in there, before you even log in, you'll get this, the top, and you'll get, when you click on Courses on Moodle for Teachers, you'll get Moodle MOOCs. You go into the Moodle MOOCs, and then you're prompted with two courses on top. One is for Moodle for beginners, as one is Moodle for non-beginners. All right, but you can't join the course, not the beginners, which is for anyone who's been a teacher, a non-teacher, and not for the non-beginners. In other words, you need to make sure that you have an account. So you create an account. Anyone here not create an account? Give me thumbs up if you create an account, thumbs down if you haven't. Who has created an account on Moodle for Teachers? So let's see. We've got 26 people right now. So, um, okay, so there we've got someone who has a, okay, Piotr. All right, so you need to create an account in order to know what we're talking about. So we've got one, let's see. Oh, there's another person. Uh, Okay, so create an account. Okay, if your thumb is down, create an account. And the link is right there. Okay, um, let's add the link. So click on the link now, Moodle for Teachers, and then you can do it later on or while I'm talking. Okay, there it is. That's the link. You need to create an account. Okay, those who have it. Once you create an account, you log in. That's one of my usernames. You log in. If you happen to forget, no problem. Unless you registered Facebook. How many of you have a Facebook login? Okay, how many have a Facebook login? Because that's another ball game. Okay, I don't. If you have a Facebook login, you cannot retrieve your user or your password because the system cannot keep your Facebook. It only keeps your email. All right, so make sure that you have this in mind. So if you're having a problem because you don't remember your Facebook account or your Facebook is not open, you need to have your Facebook account open when you log in. And you'd like me to change your system, let me know, okay, and I'll do that. All right. The top. Notice we're talking about the top of the website. Once you log in, you'll see my courses. But this is a really good feature, and you'll see it on the left, top left of the tab. Okay, really, really a nice feature. And then once you click on that, you get your courses. And you should all be enrolled. If you enrolled in uh, the beginners, you should be in three courses. If you enrolled in non-beginners, you should also be in three courses because there is the management uh, Moodle for managers and uh, Moodle practice area. All right. So number one, you see my courses. Number two, 
Now, what is number two? I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of small. What is number two? Okay, a few um, tricks and tips. Number two. Any ideas what number two is? It's right here. Any ideas? Expand. Any other ideas? Do you want me to expand the page? Hide content or show it. Okay, you got great ideas. But what does a minus usually mean? You have it in, uh, in this class on WizIQ2. If you go to the minus, just uh, above my, well, below my head, above my head, you'll notice that there are minuses on the right. Exactly, Tom. It means minimize. Minimize. Okay, that's what it means. And if you click on that, I don't know if you've tried this. What happens is you will not see number six people or online users or comments because you have minimized them. In order to maximize, you'll have to click again. Okay, let's see. There's a question here about registering, I presume. Yeah, I make life difficult. That's right. Uh, they are, for example, dollar signs or, you know, all these funny things. Those, okay, are alpha numeric characters. They're also these things. Okay, what's at the top? Or these, okay? Those are alphanumeric. Funny word, eh? I have no idea where they got the uh, these expressions. Okay, so number two is minimize, and you can do that, and it'll make your page look a lot, you know, less um, uh, active, and then you won't have too many uh, attention blinks. So if you want to avoid attention blinks, I suggest you minimize a lot of the stuff, and you can minimize everything from the left to the right, all right? And only, and then you'll have the center and you'll be able to focus. Exactly, exactly. Very good, Percy. So minimize, 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 and minimize. No, Carl, you cannot do password one, two, th oh, you can if you do it with, uh, that's right, that way you can. But, okay, uh, number three. This is a little review. What is number three? That's right, Percy. They're tabs. Very good. Okay, and these are tabs for each of the courses. And of course, we're going into week two. Okay, week two. And what is week two about? Okay, I just want to make sure that you're seeing these things and you'll be seeing the same thing in the course whether it's beginners or non-beginners. That's right, Robson. These are the resources. Okay, what's number four? Number four is really important. Tom, would you agree with me that number four is important? Why? Okay, why is number four important? Notice it's called the latest news, and there's something here, start blogging in and out of Moodle, and there are older topics. Notice, click on the older topics to get the older announcements, exactly. Announcements are really important because they they connect us to what is happening. Alerts, exactly. New important information. But notice also the older topics. Okay, really important to also uh, realize that there is something there. So why not uh, go into it? Okay, so go into the older topics as well. Okay, and what is number five? Okay, number five is also very important. It could be on the left. It's called a block. Very good. Percy mentioned blocks. Number five, notice minimize. You can minimize all this and only maximize it when you want to see what's there. And then you have a nice clean page on the Moodle. Okay, so make your life easy. Um, notice there are active, the activities here that I have used in the course are assignments, choices, form, glossaries, and resources. These are all activities. Notice that resources are activities too. Okay, and if you click on them very good, Lisa, you go into them. And if you go into the forums, you're able to, and this is really important for those of you that don't like 
uh, notifications, too many email notifications. If you go into the forums, you'll be able to unsubscribe. Now, why is this a good idea? Why is it a good idea to go into the forums here on the right and simply unsubscribe to all? You can unsubscribe automatically. There is a, a tab, not even, no, it's not a tab, it's a link that says subscribe all unsubscribe. Okay, not to receive emails. That's right, that's right, that's right. You don't have to get those emails, Lisa. Okay, so go into the forums, click on it now, and tell me if you have any problems. Go there now. Okay, go into your course, okay, uh, into your My Courses on Moodle for Teachers, and go into the, um, the right activities, click on the forms, and see if you can do it right now. And if you've done it, oh, Robson's done it already? Wow. If you, once you do it, give yourself a star, okay? Then I'll know that you've done it. Okay, so go in there now and uh, give yourself a start. Now, I want you to realize that you can't do this in a real classroom, okay? We're in a virtual classroom, okay? So think of that. We're on WizIQ in a virtual classroom. You can use any other virtual classroom too, not just WizIQ. And you can actually work with your students in real time and have them do stuff and then check okay by using the screen sharing section links why section oh good look at how many people are managing to do this at the same time great skills great multitasking skills excellent okay very good Kristen I see you're doing it people are getting really really good that's excellent see week one is really important to um, it's actually the most important week the rest is going to be easy. Very good, Teresa. You did it. Excellent. All right. So that's how you do it. If you don't want to get, you unsubscribe. If you want to subscribe back, subscribe. But you don't have to, and you don't get any emails, and your life will be much, much easier. All right. So week two. We're getting into week two. And uh, this is just a reminder. Let me get rid of my... Uh, okay. Uh, this is a reminder. Okay, we've gone through this, but again, and I'm sure now you'll know a lot more, less um, attentional blinks. Okay, you're going to learn about the resources, okay, and uh, the resources are right here. And this is your chance to become a teacher. You are no longer going to be just a student. You're going to be a teacher starting on June 7th, which is, when is June 7th? June 7th is tomorrow, okay, starting tomorrow. Okay, how many of you can't wait till tomorrow? Tomorrow is a long way off, isn't it? How many can't wait? Give me a smile if you can't wait till tomorrow. Okay, a smiley if you'd like it today, 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 Nellie. I think I'm ready. All right, if you think you're ready, all right, excellent. Excellent, excellent. If you think you're ready, all right, I will, you'll have a chance to do it from today. Yes, all right. So after this class, give me a few seconds and uh, we'll try to do that. All right. So you're going to go into your role as a teacher. Okay, you're going to become a teacher so that you can view the resources. And how many are there? How many resources do you see? Because that's it. There aren't that many. Uh, Carl, you said you enrolled in the presenters. Oh, yes. You need to enroll in either Moodle for beginners or Moodle for non-beginners. Okay. Seven. Okay, good. That's a good number. Now, you're also going to have to reflect on the process. Now, I want you to keep this in mind. Whenever you go into, don't, not to waste time, okay? So be efficient. When you go into the teacher's practice area, go in with a screen, some kind of a screen uh, process, okay? So that you can get screenshots. 
Now you can get different kinds of screenshots. You can use uh, whatever you use for screenshots. So be ready to take screenshots of everything. All right. And then you need to document the process like a movie. So how are you going to document the process? Go in with something free like screencast omatic omatic or you can use a movie move note or you can use screener or whatever if you want to create a presentation you'll need to get screenshots okay you can use jink you know for the uh, screenshots okay so you don't want to go back and forth so simply go in let me see if i've got them here oh i have them later on uh, go in so that you're ready to do the work and you don't have to go back and forth okay so you're going to be creating audio and video tutorials of the process now this is really important because it's a learning tool and it's a teaching tool at the same time okay so keep that in mind teaching and learning tool okay you are learning through teaching all right okay there are questions about blogs we'll get to that in a minute um, all right, so you're going to be using MoveNote if you want to use presentations like Neva says, Nevis, or you can use Screencast-O-Matic or Jink. Okay, so if you want to use a PowerPoint presentation, upload it onto MoveNote and speak about it, you can use um, screenshots using whatever system you like. Percy has a nice one that I like, but I I use Max. All right, so the Moodle practice area. The Moodle practice area is available right here okay in your course whether you're on Moodle for beginners or Moodle for non-beginners you'll be able to see it all right in week two before uh, this tab okay and for those of you that want to start reflecting you click on reflecting on live presentations and you can start reflecting on the live classes okay you don't want to wait to the last minute so do that Okay, thank you for answering, Tom, because uh, I see my mouse is acting up. All right, so where do you get the link to the Moodle practice area? Well, it's in your account, in your courses. Okay, it's in your courses, but you can also get the link here by clicking on it. So can someone add it to the chat box, please? Notice there are also um, support forms. Use them. Okay, use the support forms and ask questions. Notice here the progress is a dotted box because you don't need to do anything really. You can do it if you want. The system doesn't do it for you. Okay, so use the support to ask questions. Thank you very much, Kirsten. That's excellent. But it's in your, but right now your students there, keep that in mind until I make you teachers. All right, now, once you get in, the first thing you do is you click here in order to turn on the light. You don't want to work in the dark. So turn on the light. Remember to turn on the light because no one can work in the dark. And this is uh, the icon. Notice it's in the middle. It's not on the right, on the far top right. It's, in the it's kind of in the center there. Okay, so turn on the light. Is it turned on or off? I asked this uh, last time too. Is it turned on or off? It's off. That's right. So if you want to turn it on, it'll turn red. That's right. So you turn it on. And then notice here, you share your video tutorials. This is by Tom. In your courses, in your course, whether Moodle for Beginners or Moodle, you do not share it in the Moodle practice area. In fact, you're going to delete everything that you try out. Now, this is really important. Otherwise, it's going to get really, really slow. So delete the resources and activities once you document your work. Now, I want, I want to see if you really understood that. So give me thumbs up if it's clear. You delete the resources and activities once you document your work. Okay, delete once you document. Yes, 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 yes. You will delete it once you document. Okay, so keep that in mind. 
or Tom is going to delete it for you. <laughs> Tom. Okay. In week, you have until week three. Until the end of week three. How much time do we give you? All right. And then we'll turn. Okay. All right. Next, the Moodle practice area. Notice there are tabs here. One is to go back to Moodle for beginners or Moodle for non-beginners. There's a link there. There's also the resource. This week, you're only going to be in the resource practice area. Who is going to go into the activity practice area? Raise your hand. Anybody going to go into this area? No, because it's for week three. So you're going to focus on only resource practice area. You're going to play around here. Okay? Yes. That's all. All right. So let's continue. If you want to go back, this is how you go back. All right. And here's support in case you have questions and you don't know how to go back or anything else. Okay. Each uh, area has... Now, we're going to jump into week three because I want to talk about WizIQ and WizIQ is an activity. So in week three, you're going to practice activities. So only then are you going to go into the uh, activity practice area. All right, so WizIQ is actually an activity, for those who don't know, in the Moodle. Okay, here it is. It's an activity. It's not a resource. And if you want to practice, you add it. Okay, now you can only add it as a manager. I don't think you can add it as a teacher. Now, I've been using WizIQ for seven years. It's not a long time. It seems less, but it's been seven years. <laughs> I should go on sabbatical, right? <laughs> or I had to be on sabbatical last year. Um, WizIQ live on classes. And the experience has been amazing. Amazing because it's a learning experience. As you know, technology always advances. Nothing stays the same. You know, seven years is a long time, Andrea. You know, you have to kind of divide it by seven, like dog years uh, on the internet, because there are so many changes, so many changes on with technology. If you think of Google, how many of you have been using Google uh, Gmails? Okay, let me ask you this. Google Gmails. Okay, have they changed in the past uh, 10 years? All right, and think of Facebook. Has Facebook changed in the past year? Everything changes. The looks changes. They add applications. So it's never the same. And that's why it's a learning experience. Actually, um, seven years is meaningless because there are always changes. So you're always learning more ads. But you can get rid of ads. You know, there are all kinds of programs that are free that you help you get rid of it if you use Safari or uh, a Mac. All right, so what is WizIQ about? This live class that you're in right now. If you had to describe it, what would you add? Okay, if you could add in the chat box. What is a whiz like? What is, what is this? You can't find the light because I haven't turned, I haven't allowed you, Nevis. You have to stay here. No attentional blinks right now. Nothing's going to work. You'll have to wait until I turn on, um, until I turn on the, uh, the system. All right, so this is the web portal. Okay, lots of ideas. After class, yes. Thank you, Tom. Okay, so um, yes, WizIQ is everything changes. So what is this learning platform? How is it different from Moodle or, or from um, Coursera or from um, anything else, from a blog? I don't know. A blog is also a learning environment or a wiki or... It's live. Thank you. So how is it different from a chat? A chat can also be live. Or a wiki, a Google Drive can be live too. We can be there at the same time and chatting. And uh, so, ah, there's a video. Okay. So how is it different from Hangout or Skype? Okay, there. Skype and Hangout. How is it different? They're, they also have uh, videos. Aha, uh -huh, now we're getting there. 
there's a whiteboard. It's called you know, not a blackboard, but it's called the whiteboard. There is a whiteboard, and there uh, there isn't this kind of whiteboard in the Hangout or on Skype. I'm not courses. It's a live class. You can get exactly Carl, and Carl has been using it. Uh, thank you, Ella. Right. Okay, it's actually a teaching and learning tool. Okay, that's the virtual class. And the virtual class has a whiteboard. Exactly. And there are a lot of things that you can do on the whiteboard. For example, what can you do on a whiteboard in a classroom? Okay, think about it. In your classes, or if so how many of you still use a blackboard or a green board with a chalk? Okay, most of us use whiteboards. Well, what we can draw, <laughs> if we're good at it, um, we can write. No blackboard. Okay, what else can we do in a face-to-face -face class on the whiteboard? Okay, if it's a digital whiteboard, we could probably do the same thing that we can do here. Okay, show files, exactly. If it's a digital whiteboard, but if it's um, just a whiteboard with a felt pen, we can't show presentations. Okay, so the whiteboard is really, really a very effective way. We can also ask students to come to the whiteboard and add stuff. That's right, smart whiteboard. So this is actually a in um, a lot of ways, okay? In a lot of ways, it's pretty smart. It could be smarter, which is what I'm hoping for in the future. I'm hoping for that uh, the WizIQ and every whiteboard will be a smart board, okay, with other features. Next, we've got writing tools and multimedia files. We can add all kinds of files here. We can add um, audio, MP3. We can add MP4. We can add text files, Word, Word docs. We can add PDFs, which is actually images. We can add images. Okay. And did I leave out anything? Can you get a hard copy from your whiteboard, Nelly, in live classes? Not virtual? You mean on a smart whiteboard? A curl. Um, you can get screenshots, and you can share the uh, the links, but not in this one. But I'm hoping that this will be part of the future too, because some whiteboards do have that feature, and we need it definitely, definitely. You can just record. Definitely, curl. It's something that we should be able to uh, to do is to print. You can print if you go into your uh, browser. Okay, uh, let's see if I can print this. Uh, if you go into, yes, I can. If you go into your browser, you can actually print this. Yes, you can print everything through your browser. All right, so that's something that you might want to try right now. Go into your browser and click on print and print. Hello, Helena, good to see you. All right, so audio video. Now, when I say audio video, I mean files. Now, notice the difference between audio video and files. They're not the same. I can upload an MP3, or which is audio, or a video MP4. But I also have a microphone. Do you see my microphone? It's uh, it's right here. Okay, that's my microphone there. Um, I have another kind of microphone, which I don't like. I've got this headset. Okay, here's another headset, okay, that I use for my PC because I can't use this for my PC. Okay, it's limited. So I use this thing. Yeah, it looks nice. Eh? Um, and then... Um, my uh, webcam and um, and the webcam of course that uh, thing right now okay you can see me okay and that's all in the virtual class there are also polls and you saw Andreas using polls and uh, Zaid used polls polls are really great um, and uh, I'm just showing this for the uh, live um, Camtasia YouTube you'll be able to see this on YouTube as well so I've got lots of them and let's see when did you first when did the first iPod come out have you ever used Facebook group with your students here's one uh, let's um, let's publish this one okay there's a poll okay that you can take right now okay um, and I have them in here the polls will stay <laughs> unless I delete them they stay 
which is really nice because you can reuse them again, 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 and, and you can compare the results. Now you can get a screenshot of everything, everything right now. You can get screenshots and you can add them to your blogs. Now there, we talked, Tom mentioned blogs before. I've mentioned them. Um, there's an announcement about blogs. You can use the Moodle blog and you can use an external blog or you can use both. Okay, for your reflections. And reflections are really great. But get screenshots all the time. Okay, get screenshots and this way you can remember things. And don't feel uncomfortable about doing it because this is all completely um, reusable and it's, uh, it's free and it's open and this is part of the open. All right, so I see the 25 people have voted on 37. Shame on you. Where are you? You must be somewhere else trying to, to become a teacher. Um, so feel free to use that. There's the questions. All right, so let's see what the votes are. Let me share the results with you. Um, okay, I've shared the results with you. Do you see them? Give me a thumbs up. Hello, uh, if you can see the results, thumbs up if you see them. Thumbs down if you don't. Okay, I see most people see the results. Okay, so what are the results? Um, how many people use Facebook? Okay, what are the results? How many people use Facebook? Oh, it's still loading. Hmm, interesting. Hey, 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 17, no, 11, yes. <laughs> so what is the percentage? I'm looking for percentages. Uh, what is the percentage of those that, uh, okay, about 30%, right? 29.72, that's right. And um, 49 point, oh, some people voted. 49.95, uh, okay, use, uh, that's interesting, say they don't use Facebook. Okay, so that's the end of the poll. Uh, thank you. All right, and um, that's it. Okay, so there's a poll, which is really great. It gets the students engaged and gives teachers. You can get instant feedback and learn from uh, the participants, of course. And the breakout rooms. How many of you have heard of breakout rooms? Okay, give me thumbs down, thumbs up. Okay. What's a breakout room? You know, it sounds like, oh, I broke out in a hive. Breakout. Let's break out. What does it mean? I guess... What does it mean to break out? Let's break out. Okay, anybody uh, for breaking out? Let's all run to another room. All right, can we do that physically? Time out, yes. Can we all go into, I'm sure my husband would be very happy if I would get out of this room for a little bit and join him. Um, maybe in your house it's the same way. Go for a tea. Yeah, break out means let's go into another room. But the only thing is that we're still going to continue uh, learning together. In other words, we're not leaving one another. So you can have a breakout room in the virtual class, which is really awesome. It is absolutely amazing. All right, breakout rooms. So you can do that in the virtual class and you should try it out, but you need to have quite a few participants. And then there's the screen sharing apparatus, which is really great unless you're on a Mac, because then it takes time. But if you're using the desktop WizIQ feature, it's really nice. Yes, Percy, we've done that at the beginning. The link, can someone help Percy there? And then I'll get this started here. Uh, can someone add the link to this? That was one of the questions, remember, in, on the whiteboard, was to, um, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the first question. If you could add the link to today's presentation. Okay, there it is. Jarek did it. Thank you. Very fast. All right, so this is how it's done. Okay, on the Moodle, you're going to create WizIQ classes and invite your friends on the Moodle so you can try out the screen. The uh, screen sharing and the poll you need to have people and the breakout rooms, all right? So uh, first of all, you schedule a class, you give it a title. You don't need a description, but you need a title, okay? There's the red. If you're not sure, there are question marks, remember? Take a look at the question marks. They always help. What's the matter with my mouse? My mouse is acting up. 
Okay, and uh, notice the time zone. You can decide on your time zone and make sure that you do. Okay, to avoid confusion, uh, decide on your time zone. Okay. I lost my pointer. Did somebody take my pointer? And then um, notice you can schedule for right now. If you want to practice immediately and you want to document your work and you're going to document how you start a Wiz IQ class, how you schedule a class. So if you want to document it immediately, I suggest you schedule for right now. Not right now, but when you do this. And then you decide on the time, and then next you set up the class. The language, now you can have different languages. Now this is important. Uh, how many of you teach in a language other than English? Thumbs up if you do, thumbs down, down if you don't. How many of you teach in a language other than English? Hassan, you do. Okay, you don't teach in Italian. Okay, but you might have Italian students. All right, if you do, you can change the language by opening this flap. So change the language. You want to record the class? Well, you might want to record, you might not. If you're just doing a, a tutorial documenting the process, you might not want to record it. Well, for okay, it's going to be gibberish anyways. It's just practice. So you decide no and then schedule for another person. This is only for managers. Okay, you cannot do this as a teacher. You cannot select a teacher unless you're a manager. Okay, only managers are allowed uh, to have that. So that's going to be later on, not in week uh, in the last week. Okay, next, you can make your uh, class visible, show it or hidden, and then you can restrict it. Now, restrictions are important. Why would you want to restrict a class? Is it because you're mean? Why would anybody want to restrict a class? There are a lot of restrictions. By the way, all these things appear on the Moodle, but why would anybody want to restrict? Okay, why restrict? Any ideas? Oh, no, no, it's not that kind of restriction. Thank you for adding that. It just means that you want to restrict it, and notice what it says here. You will want to access at a certain time. You want to restrict it from a starting date and an ending date. Okay? It's not from anybody. All right? Now, notice the restrictions here. If you click on it, you'll get the restrictions. Okay? But if you don't, you won't. All right? Next, activity complete. And this is really important. This is what I do for you right? Because in some courses you have to do certain things. You have to, there's the box, right? Or you get a badge if you complete or if you don't. So students can manually mark the activities completed or it'll be marked by the system, all right? And then you, of course you save. Lots of information there and you'll get a chance to see it firsthand as teachers and managers. So notice here um, the WizIQ live class is an activity. And the badges. Some of you noticed, Hassan noticed that uh, in the Moodle for non-beginners, there was a little glitch there. I, um, I forgot to make it, uh, disable it, to hide it from you. So some of you went ahead and got your badges. No, no, no. I'm going to take it away and do it all over again. Shame on you. <laughs> all right. Uh, but this is not in the beginners. Okay. So you'll get your badges by reflecting, sorry, on the 10 live presentations. Are there any questions about reflecting? Okay, this is the time we've got about seven minutes. This is the time to ask questions about certificates of completion. For those of you who do not want to take a Moodle course, you don't have to. Okay, you don't have to take the Moodle training courses. You can get a certificate just for reflecting on the live presentations. And let me show you that right now. Okay, I'm going to screen share, take away my video and screen share. Okay, um, I'll start the screen sharing. Um, I may be frozen, but um, 
the screen sharing is starting. As I always say, I'm on a Mac, and Macs do not like Java, and they don't like uh, Adobe Flash. They have their own internal system. So they force you to fill in a lot of stuff. You must have seen this on YouTube on my um, recordings. Okay, so there we are. Now it's back. Okay, so let me take you to um, the Moodle. Okay, here we are. We're right in the um, Moodle for Beginners and the badges. Okay, 11 people already have their badges. Isn't that amazing? 11 people got their badges. Congratulations. Okay, now if I want to see the badge. Okay, this is the badge from my end. Okay. And I'm going to disable it, by the way, for the non-beginners because they uh, they did stuff on their own. I want to show you that I'm going to go into the Moodle for Beginners right now. Okay, here is the Moodle for Beginners. And I'm going to go in as a participant, as a student, so I can show you what's going on. All right, and uh, take you through it. So let me uh, switch roles to a student and show you what I'm going to do to make you teachers, those of you that are here. And okay, so this is the Moodle course and I'm going to minimize everything so I don't have to see this. Okay, just to show you how to minimize things so it's a lot cleaner. Okay, so I've minimized on the left and on the right so I don't have to see anything. Okay, now it's a lot clearer. Don't have to see stuff. And I'm going to go into week two. Okay, here's week two. Okay, and then this is the area for week two. It's not cluttered with other stuff. Okay, and then I have a task here. If you want to get your progress, go into the task and do it. Okay, now notice it's still grayed out, which means that uh, the time has not come to view this. All right, so... Um, it will, it will. Okay, and it's available from the 7th from tomorrow. But I said that I would let you uh, get this beforehand. So let me go back into my normal role and show you the tricks and how I do it. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to turn editing on just the way you do. Okay, it's in the center there. Now it's red, which means that it's turned on. And then I'm going to go into this wiggly thing, and I'm going to edit. Okay, click on edit. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to go into the restrict, remember the date, and I'm going to change that to now. How about that? Okay, and then so that you can open it now. All right, and scroll down, display. So now you should be able to see everything. Breadcrumbs, I'm in the editing. Okay, let's see. All right, so now, oh, something happened here. Let me try this again. It won't let me do it. Hmm. All right, let's try to do that again. Restrict. And um, let's take away the restrictions completely, and then it shouldn't cause any problems. Hmm. All right, so I guess somebody else had done that. So I should change my role here. And I'm going to do that. Let me log out and log in as somebody else. We've got seven minutes, right? I hope that um, we don't get timed out. Uh, I'll go back in a second to make sure. I'm going to go in as, uh, as someone else. Okay. Um, okay, let's see if I can uh, do this. I can't. Okay, so uh, let me go in as admin. Okay. If you're in a public place, be careful of uh, what you do. 
Now I'm going to go in as I told you. I'm going to go into my courses. Okay, I can do that, uh, but I'm not. I'm going to go to courses on Moodle for Teachers, the way I showed you, into this, and then I'm going to go into Moodle for Beginners, and then into Week 2, and open it up. But first I need to turn on the light. Even admins need to turn on the light and courses. And then very quickly, let me go into this and edit the settings. Okay, and cross your fingers and go into restrict. It should be open now. Uh, it is open. All right, so it's open. There shouldn't be a problem. All right, so let's go back here into the practice area. And now I'm going to uh, go into uh, the course. Oh, oh, it's telling me that I need to go back. Oops. Okay. I've got five minutes. Okay, I'll do this later on. I'm not going to show you the tricks. I'll do this later on. I think you got the idea of uh, it's open. Okay, thank you, Percy. Um, so let me just extend by five minutes here so we don't get timed out. Okay, so it's open now. Thank you. All right, so if you go into um, the main page of the course, you will see that there are a few courses right now. Okay, into the Moodle MOOCs, there are actually three courses. There's a course for beginners, there's a course for non-beginners, and there's a course for anyone who just wants to do the presentations and reflect on that, and they don't want to do the, uh, the Moodle training course. Okay, so that's possible. Here's the link so that you can see that information. Okay, there we are. All right, so any questions that you have, please use the support, and we'll try to uh, help you. And thank you. Got that mess there. Too many systems open. Evo, where's Evo? Evo, did you see Evo? Oh, you saw the Evo, yes. Uh, we do have Evo courses. I don't know, Lisa, didn't you take Evo last? Um, in February. Yeah, we're going to have in January, we're going to have an EVO, yes, EVO uh, 2015, a Moodle for Teachers, Moodle for Teachers EVO in January, just like we do every year. Okay, and that's not only for English teachers, it's for anyone who wants to take Moodle training. And it's probably going to be Moodle 2.7. Okay, so get ready for that. No, it's not the same. My courses are never the same. No, it's never the same, even though it kind of looks the same, but it's not. All right, so uh, feel free to ask questions and blog. Any questions about blogs, uh, external blogs? If you go into the announcements, I believe there's a video there on how to get your external blog on. There's also the YouTube playlist. Anybody have the link to the YouTube playlist? list anybody because that's where you'll get a lot of information okay the YouTube playlist anybody have the link uh, the videos for Moodle it's Moodle for teachers uh, sorry Moodle MOOC Moodle MOOC 4 playlist okay YouTube playlist before you go anybody have it Let's see if anybody got it there. If not, I'll go get it myself. Anybody get it there? Getting it? <laughs> okay. All right, I can get it too. Let's see who gets it the fastest. Um, the YouTube playlists. You're probably going to get it faster because uh, I don't have anything open here. Only on your own course. Yes. Um, there are limitations. Anybody? 
Did we get the playlist there? I don't see the playlist. It's there, we got it. It's actually, uh, the playlist is in the syllabus of the course. It's also on the Wiz IQ. There it is. Thank you. Who got it in the end? Let's see. Thank you. Internet is too slow. Yeah. When you have a lot of systems open, actually the live class, by the way, drains our system because of the videos and different things. So usually it's better to, when you're in a Wiz IQ live class or you're giving a Wiz IQ live, close everything. I mean, close YouTube, especially YouTube really drains our system. So yes, uh, the free account, if you're interested in getting a free account on WizIQ, it's, uh, here is the link, wiziq.com and then dash uh, academic and then another slash there. Okay. And you could apply for it. And if you want things to go faster, just email me. I usually get things going much faster um, because I like things to go fast. So I push where needed. Okay, so thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming to the session. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. And take it easy, okay? Have fun. And, um, and don't worry because we all have attentional blinks. So uh, thank you. And of course, I'll be adding this to the playlist. Okay, so there's um, claps for you guys. I'll be adding um, this recording to the playlist so you'll be able to view it the way I see it without your uh, names, without the attendee list or the, uh, the chat box. Oh, by the way, copy the chat. Did anybody uh, copy the chat yesterday for Andreas because he'd like to go over it? Okay, so copy chat and share it. Okay, thank you. Oh, you do have it? So yeah, Andreas would like it if you could add it. Maybe you have already added to the course feed. And let's meet in the course feed. Before you go, you've got uh, here. Okay, write one question. Don't forget this. Write one question about today's class and answer someone else's, there's no period here, someone else's question, okay? So this is for the course feed. Remember, four to six. What do you find positive about the course so far? Explain. What are you finding challenging? Explain. And write one question about today's class and answer someone else's, okay? So this, copy it, okay? You want me to copy it for you? Um, then you can take it from the chat. There it is. Whoa, it's big. Okay, wow, we came out so large. Oh my gosh. Okay, so thank you everyone. See you online. Course where? Not like that. Course, that is so cute. I uh, love that. Yes, it's course where. Where is like soft wear, a hard wear. It's not really wearing it, even though in Second Life we sometimes wear technology on us. Yeah, it's another kind of wear. Thank you. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you later. Bye.